Oh, well, Mark, check this out. Oh, look at that. Ah, what is there this? it is. What ah, is oh, gross. Nice. Actually, that's not an eel. Our planet is teeming with life, whether on land, deep in the water, or above us in the air. Many of the creatures that we have come across on our adventures often feel like long-lost friends. But there are some encounters that are so slimy, so bizarre, and so strange that I just can't help but wonder if these animals are actually aliens. Today we are going to count down the top five most alien-looking creatures we have featured on the Brave Wilderness channel. But before we begin, let's take a look at some of the otherworldly moments that didn't quite make the cut. I don't even know what to say about this. It's like the combination of a sea urchin, a sea star, an octopus. It's like many things all at once. But on the underside, look at that. It looks just like a scorpion or a spider. This camouflage is incredible. That is amazing. Okay, look at how he can almost morph the shape of his body to fit all of these little plants. And these guys have an incredible defensive posture. Look at that. They will not back down, that is for sure. It kind of looks like a caterpillar that has a bunch of spikes on it. Now on the underside, right there in the middle, that's its mouth, but it's also its butt. Many of the animals we seek are quite elusive. And one order in particular, the Yoradella, is always a challenge to get up close for the cameras. These creatures are better known as salamanders. And we've even entered dark, spider-ridden caves just to get a glimpse of them. Look, 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 right here climbing up the seven of those rocks. That is a cave salamander, you see it? Other species have required us to travel around the world to find and feature. There he goes. But one salamander specifically was so strange and so unlike any salamander I had seen before that I actually misidentified it as an eel. Coming in at number five is the slimy, crayfish hunting amphibian known as the Amphiuma. Not too much. Oh, guys, an eel! Eel! You got something? I got it, I got it, I got it! What do you got? It's an eel! Right in the bottom of the net. Wow! That is so cool. Oh, I can see his butt. Point your camera. No, 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 look at There's the side of his body right there. Whoa. Oh, it's filling like the entire bottom of the net. Look at that. Wow. He's not being too, too crazy active. Oh, they're starting to move. Look at that. Nice. Actually, that's not an eel. What, what is it, a catfish? No. Dude, Mario. Yeah. I think this is an amphenia. Is that, is that how you say it? Am, am, amphiuma. Amphiuma, amphiuma. Let me see. Dude, I don't think this is an eel at all. Look at this. Oh yeah, dude, that's totally an Ephiuma. Is it really? Yeah. No way, okay guys, this is oh, not man. an eel. What is it? It's actually a huge salamander. Yeah, look, I got this uh, little bucket of water. Okay, here, yeah, yeah, let's get, get in here. Uh, back up a little bit further. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's an Ephiuma. Holy cow. Come here, buddy. I do want to be careful because they can give you a pretty nasty bite. All right, wow. Cody, you're gonna have to give me the name of this one more time. What is it called? It is an Amphiuma. Amphuma. All right, let me see if I can. Whoa, oh, wait. Whoa. Hold, on. Whoa. hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, just let it hang out for a second. That's actually good. We it's want it walking. to do just that. It, it walks? Is, it does. It has small vestigial legs. And what it'll actually try to do is burrow down. We don't want that to happen. Come here, buddy. Let me bring it back up. All right, look at that. Look at the pointy nature of its snout. Now, these things are incredibly good at burrowing down into the mud and the muck. Now, different from some salamander species, these salamanders actually have fully developed lungs and they can stay out of the water for a considerable amount of time. Look at that. You can actually see it taking breaths of air right there. Up next on our list is an animal that we just couldn't skip over, an alien looking master of camouflage, the frogfish. Wow, I hope you guys are ready for this. Here comes the frogfish. 
Wow, have you ever seen a fish this bizarre? Now this animal is a voracious carnivore, which means that they will eat anything that comes across their path. They're ambush hunters, right? So they will sit there, lie in wait for an unsuspecting prey item to come across their mouth. Their mouths can actually open 12 times the size of what you see on the front of their face, and they can swallow food almost as large as they are. Now, if waiting for your food to come along doesn't work, they have three distinct spines on their dorsal ridge. And the one up front is actually used as a lure to draw in a fish or a small shrimp. Anything that comes in front of the animal is fair game. Whoa, what did I see on its fin there? Where? Oh, I see like, it's like a, like a, like an octopus jet behind its fin. Yeah, you see that? That's located on the back of the pelvic fins there, and they can actually force water through those openings to give themselves a jet propulsion of speed if they need to quickly get away. Believe it or not, we caught a more bizarre looking and even bigger frogfish. Are you guys ready to see that? I think we're ready. Now, the reason that we really wanted to get this one up close for the cameras is look how much this animal looks like a head of coral. It even has little tubulars growing off of its skin. It's crazy. It's perfectly camouflaged. Almost impossible to see when this is beneath the ocean surface. So it's safe to say this fish isn't trying to stand out. No, this fish is trying to blend in at all costs. His entire life relies on being camouflaged. So many of our ocean's creatures appear alien because they're adapted to spending their lives in aqueous environments. Next on our countdown is something a little more nightmarish. It's smelly. It looks like a combination between a scorpion, centipede, and a water bug, and it almost crawled into my ear. Slinking in as our number three alien, get ready to meet the Helgramite. No, nothing. What is it? There's one right here. What? Ah! What is there it? There it is! Ah! Oh, gross! Ah, I got it! Ah, ah, ah! Oh, it's trying to bite me! Oh! There it is! What is that? It's a Helgramite! Oh, mackerel! That's a big one, too! Wow! All right, guys. Well, if you remember an Instagram post I made a few weeks ago of a creature that looked, ah, it's biting me. Okay, they do bite. There you have it. Everybody want to know, do they bite? Yes, they do bite. It is latched onto my finger right now. Oh, that hurts, but it's not breaking skin. That's, uh, oh, ah. Ooh, it's got a hold of me. Now, the Helgramite is actually the larva stage of the Dobson fly. It's about as wicked looking as this thing is, only with big wings and enormous front mandibles. However, those mandibles aren't strong enough to pinch and bite onto anything. Now, if the bite isn't enough, what they will also do to deter a predator is squirt a nasty smelling musk from their rear end. And it actually smells just like human feces and- Ew, what? It smells oh, like, it smells like- Oh, like poop exactly like poop oh, and it is already squirted musk all over my finger oh it absolutely stinks there look at that oh wow that is so bizarre i don't know how you're leaving this oh it's like an alien what did i tell you it's like a night a living nightmare look at that can you imagine what it would be like to have one of these things crawl into your ear it's gonna eat your brain Ugh. No, 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 no. Ow! Ah! Ah! Oh, that actually really hurts. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Looks pretty good, dude. I think it's actually poked a hole in my ear. Ah! Ow! What do you guys think? Helgamite earrings? Could this be the new look? <laughs> no. Is it dangling not. down from my ear? Oh, yeah. Ah! I found one Helgamite, and then I kept flipping over rocks, and I found. 25 helder mites. Dude. <laughs> so, no what road. I challenge you to do right now is put your hand into this bowl and see if you get bitten by helder mite. I'm Director Mark, and I'm about to enter the bite zone with 
25 Helgenmats. All right, I can't watch this. Put Wait. your hand in there, come on. One, two, three. In there. Oh, it's so creepy! <laughs> All up on you there. Oh, oh they're, they're pooping on you. Ah, it's got bit! Oh, just, oh no! I got, oh, there's another one! Ah. Imagine yourself falling into a swimming pool filled with Helgramites. If you think 25 of them are creepy, try to picture 25,000. Okay, maybe that's not such a good idea. In at number two, and even stranger than its cousin, the black sea hare, let's give an ink spewing standing ovation for the brown sea hare. Oh, whoa, Mark, check this out. Whoa, if you thought the banana slug was big, look at that. Whoa, what is that? That is a sea hare, also known as a sea slug. And boy, is this thing slimy. Oh, here's another one. Look at that! Two right next to each other! Whoa. Handful of sea slugs. Here, give me the container. Yeah, here, hold on a second. It's be much easier for us to see them like this. It's like a big organ. Look at that! Whoa. Wow! This is the California brown sea hare. And the reason that they're called sea hares is can you see these tentacles up front there? Kind of looks like the ears of a rabbit. These slugs don't really have many predators at all. One defense that they do have though, just in case something does try to eat it, is the ability to ink. Just like an octopus, if it gets agitated, it will excrete this nasty looking purple substance, allowing them to then slink down into the rocks and disappear. And I wanna show that to you guys real quick before we let them go. Now this isn't gonna injure the animal in any way whatsoever. Now the ink is actually a byproduct of the kelp that they're eating. That's what gives it this purple pigmentation. Look at that. Oh, I'm getting totally stained right now. Okay, I'm gonna put the slug back into the container and let's see what that looks like. There you go. Now that is what they will do to create confusion for any potential predator that's trying to eat it. Now as you can see, the slug is just fine. Still have ink coming out of the back of its parapodia. Look at that, oh, oh, there it goes again. You see that? Wow, that is crazy. Look at the little bubbles floating up. Look at all this slime. That's not water, that is slime. Look at that running down my hand. Can you see that? Ugh, it is all slimy. That is crazy. Wow. Well, if our number two animal wasn't alien enough with its perfectly designed camouflage, gooey slime, and purple ink, our number one creature might just be enough to make you believe that our planet is crawling with aliens. Back yeah. Before. Come look what I found. What? What'd you get? I've got a giant ornithopra, the what? rare one. Oh man! Right here on this rock. We, what do we do? Um, Coyote's not even here. What do we do? We just film it? Uh, well, certainly we have to film it. I've got a container in my backpack. Um, we could contain it, take it back to the lodge, have Coyote check it out, and uh, we get some great B-roll shots. We'll bring it back. Yeah, we'll bring it right back after, and uh, that'll be awesome, dude. Great find, dude. Peyote! Peyote! Grassline? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Show. Check out what Mark found. Show. Get out of here! We found You were kidding me! We found it on the rock, like four paces where we found the brown one. Yeah. Get out of here, I cannot believe that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I, I can't believe we found it! How are you going, bro? This is insane! <laughs> Woo, this is crazy. Whoa, you are looking at the velvet worm. Quite possibly the rarest creature you can come across in the Costa Rican rainforest. This creature's ancestors date back 500 million years to the Cambrian period. That is before the time of the dinosaurs. They are actually capable of shedding the outer layer of skin around once a month, just like a snake. And when they do shed that, they basically walk out of the skin, similar to the way a snake slithers out of its skin, and then they're even softer and more brilliantly bright. Now, despite the fact that this creature is actually kind of cute, 
believe it or not, it is a voracious predator. And the way that they hunt is they slowly move through the rainforest floor, forging amongst leaves and dead logs, and they'll use those two front sensory organs to kind of tap on their prey. And as soon as they sense something to eat, they shoot out a sticky slime. And it is so incredibly strong that it can immediately pin the prey down. And they have a little mouth up front. Inside that mouth is a single tooth that is like a razor blade. They insert that tooth into their victim and then they leak in saliva. And it slowly breaks down the insides of their prey and they drink it up just like a milkshake. Wow. The funny thing about the velvet worm, which actually isn't a worm at all, is that it is one of the first terrestrial species to walk the planet. So in a sense, I guess we could consider it an ancient alien. I hope you all enjoyed this look back at some of our favorite alien encounters, and we can't wait to discover more creatures like these on our upcoming adventures. Revisiting our creepy-looking Earthbound aliens was a blast, but if you are in the mood for something a little more cuddly, make sure to go back and watch our Top Cutest Creatures episode. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.